No, that can't be the ending. It simply can't. I won't accept it, and I hope you won't either. There are more endings, more possibilities. I, I can feel it. We are just going to have to sort through them all until we find the one that fits. Oh, I love this. I love this, like, this time nonsense that's going on. Okay, so we have this one. We can do flight now. And we have this one. We just got into hostile interrogation. So, we can do this. Wait a good. Okay, let's go back a bit. Let's go back a bit and use flight here and see what happens with the MCDC. Okay, so this was after um, um, they splashed Iggy with the goop by accident by pushing him into the, the, the ooze puddle and then half of him mutated. And then the clipboards were chasing him and he ran to the treehouse. Rolo is currently kidnapped and underground somewhere. And he, but he still had to walkie-talkie. He told him not to go to the treehouse, but couldn't make it out. So this is what happened. So they're surrounded at the treehouse, and fighting didn't work because MCDC is kind of jank. So let's try running away. Luca drew himself up and decided to take the only option they had left: flight. He squinted down the barrel of the mission control defense cannon, aiming it through an opening in the dense tree branches. I was gonna use it like a, a zip line. He looked up with surprise as it struck true and taut. Wow, I can't believe that worked. Hey, Mr. Kerr. We'd love to hear your thoughts, but I'm afraid we have places to be. Come on, Iggy. Yeah. See ya, jerks. Yeah. <sighs> Fine, we know where that leads them. This way, we'll take the tunnels. The tunnels. Luca and Iggy winced as they sprinted through the thicket. The branches clawed at them, reluctant to give passage. After what felt like a marathon, Luca stopped in his tracks as they reached the clearing. What the? That was all he was able to say before Iggy slammed into his back. The boys tumbled down a steep decline and crashed with a wheezing thud on a surface as hard as ice. In fact, it was ice. Chapter 5 Signs They stood silently, catching their breath. The sky was like sapphire. With each breath, a plume of steam escaped from Luca's lungs. Let's keep moving. Luca pulled Iggy to his feet as they gazed across a snowy terrain. What? Yeah, everyone kept saying that the forest felt colder for some reason. And all the bugs are gone. It's because of the, the, how, this weird weather nonsense? That was actually pretty badass. Uh-huh. I think we lost them. Are you up in the mountains? I don't think so. If anything, we went downhill. And what's up with the Winter Wonderland? All I know is there's no bowing back the way we came. Let's see if we can get our bearings. Follow me. Find a way home. Alright, this is interesting. A disc of smooth metal was lightly covered in snow. Oh, that the tunnels? Two faint seams were visible along the surface. We gotta get out of here. Manhole cover? If it is, I've never seen one like it. Go! Get out of here! Run, 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 run! Luca! Luca, are you Luca there? Luca had almost forgotten the walkie-talkie he was carrying. It's that bozo cur. How come nothing bad has happened to you out in those woods? Luca winds? looked at Iggy with hesitation. Oh, snap! What happened to Rolo? No need to be rude. With a resigned sigh, Luca responded. It seems like the only dangerous thing in the woods is you. He speaks, the young man of the hour. Now how in tarnation did you end up with one of our radios? Just lucky, I guess. Boy, how do you Van Horns are full of surprises, aren't you? You knew my parents. Never had the honor of meeting your father, but your mom was sure was a handful. Luca winced, shoving the walkie-talkie back into his pocket. 
We gotta keep moving. Are you gonna be able to trace him with the walkie-talkie? Oh, there- oh! Whoa, 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 wait! That looks at the Beacon Pine sign. What's the readout? Just in about 258 Kelvin. It's down a bit from last time. Should we report this to Mr. Kerr? Meh, so wait, we're in safe ranges. This may be spreading, but it's under control for now. Even a small nudge in an equilibrium could cause a cascade. Dude, relax. There's a few more sites to hit before we can punch out. Let's get this over with. What's all this? Hard to say with all this snow. I think it's the town sign. I can almost make out the letters under there. What town could this even be? There could be another town this deep into Weepwood. I'm looking at evidence to the contrary. Let's figure out what we're dealing with here. Step one, snow's gotta go. I'll see what I can do. Yeah! <gasps> it is! This is stared in disbelief at the sign that now clearly read. Welcome to Beacon Pines. Was there a, like, is this, is this time space nonsense or was there a previous town before this one? This doesn't make any sense. We're in Beacon Pines? How's that possible? We ran away from town. How did we get back here? I guess we got turned around. Where did all the snow come from? Well, it's been colder than normal lately. That's a pretty big difference between sweater weather and this arctic hellscape. The puddle we fought at four. It was cold too. Maybe all of it leads to one source. You think it's related? What the hell's going on? We're gonna get you some answers. Let's keep moving. Oh, maybe uh, go this way. No. Okay. Here's the waste. This stuff looks familiar to you? It looks like the barrel near the puddle I, uh, shoved me into, yeah. Oopsie doopsie. That's all frozen. Looking down at the frozen stream, Luca could faintly see a school of minnows encased in the ice. Whatever happened here, it happened fast. The fish didn't even have time to run. Or, you know, swim run. Listened. This is where they, we go for the hideout. Each chain link encapsulated with a translucent layer of ice. Looks like the stuff they put up around Weepwood. The stuff who put up? I don't know. The crunching of footsteps trailing Luca went hush. He looked back to see Iggy's face twisted with confusion. <laughs> Everyone's gone. What? There's nothing here but more snow. There must be an explanation for all of this. You have to keep looking. You can look all you want. I quit. Hey, we have to keep going. Don't get it, do you? This isn't one of your pathetic Hank Atomic stories. We aren't going to save the day. We aren't even going to save ourselves. My face is mangled. The town is destroyed. And everyone we've ever known is gone. We don't know that. We can't just quit. Do whatever you want. I'm done. I guess it's gonna be okay. Luke appeared upward at the darkening sky. He let out a long, foggy breath. Faintly, Iggy began to cry. Seeing Iggy in such a pathetic state gave Luca a sense of compassion and more than a little guilt. It is getting pretty late, I think. Probably not a great idea to stumble around in the dark anyway. Luca allowed himself to collapse next to Iggy. Let's just rest for a bit. The boys huddled together for warmth and comfort. Maybe you should go inside of a building. Be probably a bit warmer. If not for exhaustion, their minds would be racing, trying to make sense of the events of the day. As it was, all they had energy for was to sit in silence, 
numb. I can't sit out in these elements for extended periods of time. You need to go inside a building. The way the snow covered everything over. It's kind of calming. Yeah. Uh, I haven't had time to say it. Thanks. Huh? Or getting us away from those creeps. I sort of froze up back there. Iggy, I should be the one apologizing. This all happened because I lost my temper. Nah, that's bull hockey. First of all, you didn't know what that gunk would do. You didn't, right? Of course not! Suck it, stop with this baloney about losing your temper. But I did lose my temper. Iggy motioned sarcastically to his half-deformed face. Obviously. But that's exactly what you should have done. Huh? I was being a horse's ass. You were supposed to be a horse's ass in response. That's how it works. Iggy, I'm having a hard time following. You wanted me to fight you? Of course. These you goody-goody types take forever to understand. It's a very basic point. Why would you go around saying cool things trying to get into fights? Iggy shrugged. Something I to do. You're an asshole because you're bored? Sometimes I just feel empty. You wouldn't understand. You and Roller are always having a blast together. Laughing and calling that dinky little t tree house mission control. Iggy now wept openly. Perfect like little Luca Van Horn. With his perfect little life. My life is not perfect. Everybody in town likes you. Not everybody. Hell, that new girl hasn't even unpacked yet and she already likes you. You have Tish. He wiped his nose with a sleeve. I love Tish. She's great. But she ain't exactly the world's greatest conversationalist, you know? Luca gave a warm chuckle. <laughs> I get that impression. Iggy cleared his throat as he wiped his eyes. <sighs> it, it must be raining out here. Definitely. Iggy arched into a wide yawn. We should probably try to get some sleep. Yeah. Let's lay low for now. Tomorrow we'll get to the bottom of all Luca's this. eyelids begin to slowly drift shut. Don't sleep outside! This is how you die! Luca? Yeah? I always did want to see the inside of your dinky little treehouse. What do you think? Not bad. I'll give you the full tour when we get back. You know what? That's hmm? all Luca could whisper before succumbing to sleep. Iggy snuggled in some more. When it comes to the worst days of my entire life, this one wasn't half bad. The house smelled of warm bread. Oh, it's another prophetic dream! Luca was playing with toy blocks on the living room rug. He looked up to see his parents on the couch. His mother held his father's head in her lap. She idly stroked his hair while humming a song. A voice behind Luca spoke. This is how you remember them, huh? Luca turned to see his own face. The doppelganger from his dreams, still clad in a yellow hazmat suit, still carrying a look of disdain behind empty eyes. Aww, look at this perfectly cozy scene. You know it wasn't really like this. The figure picked up a toy block and inspected it. It's amazing the facades that one can build given the right materials. Not that I blame us. These are a child's memories, all warm and fuzzy. You don't remember, do you? Luca snatched the block from the figure's yellow gloved hand. Remember what? The doppelganger pointed to the couch. The last day we saw him alive. The day he chose to abandon us. Luca turned to look at his father, still lounging on the couch. That's not true. He didn't abandon us. The doppelganger waved his hand dismissively. Everything is true here. It's just a matter of what we choose to see. Let me show you. The world flickered and pulsed. Luca was sitting next to his bed, listening to his heartbeat with one of his dad's stethoscopes. The doppelganger limped into the room. No, no. We both know that's not how this went. He grabbed Luca's hand and guided the stethoscope to the floor. Luca heard muffled shouting, brought close by the stethoscope. It was his parents, fighting. Do you remember what we did next? 
Luca gave a slow nod and crept down the hall to peek through the banister. He could see the outline of his mother at the bottom of the stairs. Damn it, Walt. We can't afford to get involved in this. She was scared. His father stepped forward. What am I supposed to do? Just watch? There's a sickness in this town, and we both know who's behind it. I swore an oath to help people. I won't turn my back on them. Luca's mother grabbed Walt. She was crying, pleading. I can't lose you. Walt calmly removed Eleanor's hand from his shoulder. What's right is right, and what's wrong is wrong. I could never live with myself if I let Sharper get away with this. Eleanor raised her voice. Spare me your bullshit platitudes. What about our son? Luca flinched, dropping the stethoscope down the stairs. Walt turned with a panicked smile. Luca, is that you, buddy? With tears in his eyes, Luca descended the stairs. Mom? Dad? What's going on? Walt dropped to a knee to meet Luca eye to eye. Nothing, buckaroo. Your mom and I just got a little overexcited is all. Luca placed the stethoscope against his father's chest. His heart was racing. It sounded like you were going somewhere. Walt gently removed the device from Luca's ears. Listen to me, Luca. I have some business to take care of. I'll be back in time to tuck you in. Luca hugged his father tightly. Promise? Walt stood up and walked to the door. He glanced over his shoulder. I promise. With a wink and a grin, he put on his hat and strode out into the evening sun. Oh, jeez. Ah, new person. A figure approached soundlessly from the foggy snowfall. It stood above them, lingering in contemplation. Slowly raising one hand above Iggy, it snapped out two brisk wraps on his head. From a deep slumber, Iggy sprang up defensively. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hands off me. It was the calming presence or the recognition that he was not in danger. Iggy felt his clenched fists lower. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you think you're doing? Luca looked up, gradually remembering his whereabouts. The figure exhaled a cloud of warm vapor. How are y'all not dead from sleeping in the snow? You two certainly have caused a lot of commotion. What's that supposed to mean? Take it easy, Izzy. We were asleep minding our own business. You're the one running around knocking on people's heads. I'm sorry if I hurt you, Iggy. You didn't hurt nobody. Anybody. Huh? Oh, I see. You think you're better than me? You when it came to complete strangers, Iggy had trouble cobbling together an insult. You big catted scarfy necked furball. Mm-hmm. Okay, let's lower the temperature a bit here. Interesting choice of words. I mean, let's all just calm down. Who are you? A friend. An observer. A hitchhiker on an infinite expanse of possibility. Great. How about a name? If you must call me something, you can call me Nat. Iggy huffed with gratification. How about you make like a gnat and buzz off? Very well. Nat began to turn away indifferently. Wait. Do you live here? You might say that. So you know where we are. You might also say that. Look, pal, we just want to find a safe way out of here. You gonna help us or not? Before knowing how to leave, we must know where they are. We must know where they are. All right, that does it. Luca, I don't know about you, but I'm getting out of here, one way or another. Iggy turned sharply and began to stomp off. Enough with the riddles. Iggy, wait up. Realizing he'd worn their patience then, Nat relented. Very well, I suppose this isn't the time for metaphors. I'll show you how to get back home. Luca and Iggy turned around with hope in their eyes. Come here. Nat took a deep breath in. Close your eyes. How come when Nat walked, there wasn't like footstep sounds? Nat exhaled slowly, then snapped his fingers. Okay, open them. For a brief moment, 
Luca and Iggy let themselves believe that some great magic was about to unfold until they opened their eyes and found themselves in the exact same place, cold and disheartened. This is your home. This is Beacon Pines. Look, Nat, we don't know how we got here. Maybe we stumbled through some time travel gate and weep wood. Are we teleported to some alternate universe? Or this is all just some cruel experiment by Curran's goons? But this is not our home. You're inching closer to the truth. Alas, the reality is much less fanciful. Just give it to us straight. So be it. As I said, this is Beacon Pines. The original, true Beacon Pines. You both grew up here. But the town you've called your home for the past several years is a replica. Aha! A remarkable achievement of engineering, to be fair. But a replica nonetheless. That's impossible. It's too much work. You need a, a whole town to replicate a whole town. Indeed, to pull off such a feat would require immense labor power. That which could be moved, would be moved. That which could not, would require a precise duplicate. You would have noticed. Someone would have noticed. I think so, unless the auditing was impeccable. A mind-numbing attention to detail. As for the innumerable trivialities which complete the tapestry, well, we can leave that to this miraculous thing we call a brain. As a real aversion to discontinuity, a revulsion even. The brain has a wonderful way of smoothing out the rough edges, keeping us sane. Look at Iggy looked around uncomfortably. Wait, where? How come there's no narrator voice? Brad. So you're saying that someone made an entire new town and moved us all and no one noticed? Precisely. But why? Why is the one question that can never be answered with certainty? Best one can do is to uncover. Nat narrowed his eyes furrowed his brow and uttered the source why well, just say the source like that why indeed began to laugh uncomfortably it's all ridiculous there's no way he could he down at his feet his eyes started back and forth in contemplation but with a sudden pain a thought struck him if this really is home he sprinted off into the pale distance. As Iggy turned to follow, Nat called out. Iggy, it's not too late to turn back. Simply head west through Weepwood. Chapter 6 The Source Nat expressed his sympathy with a shrug and sauntered off as unassumingly as he'd arrived. He'd given Luca and Iggy what they needed, and nothing more. As Luca sprinted across the snow, the events of the past few days became clearer, pieces to a larger puzzle. Rollo said he was underground somewhere, captured. Mr. Kerr tried to cover it up with lies. The clipboards were hell-bent on capturing Iggy. It all seemed to point to perennial harvest. But right now, there was one thing that Luca needed to know. Luca stopped dead in his tracks. The tree was gone, uprooted and moved, leaving a raw gash in the earth. He dropped to his knees and dug wildly at the cold snow. His numb hands hit something hard, a headstone. A dry whisper escaped Luca's lips. Yeah, you. Yeah. All this time I thought I was visiting you. But you've been here, alone, in the snow. Dad, I'm so sorry. They ruined your favorite spot in the world. Our favorite spot in the world. Dad, what do I do? There was no reply. Just snow-covered silence. 
Why'd you get me to slip like that? What if I couldn't find you, you jerk? I finally noticed the tears welling in Luca's eyes and the snow-covered grave. Oh. Iggy, they... They stole his tree, Iggy. Yikes. Suddenly, they heard the crunch of approaching footsteps in the snow. Look it. 